Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today we have a special show where we're at the ABV Barrel Shop Tasting Bar trying six different brandies. Should be fun. From a distillery called Clear Cut, we'll tell you a little bit more about them. My name is Steve Akeley. I'm joined by Jim Fosnott. I'm joined by Darren McCroy and Evan Neaters. Hey guys, what's going on? How are we doing, Steve? Nothing. Good, how are you? Good, good. Things are well. Yeah, this is kind of exciting. So this came about actually by mistake. I signed up for an online class. Jason Sauter, our buddy, uh, he's part of the regular crew. Uh, and he said, hey, you got to sign up for this. They make some really good brandies. I think you'd like it. So I signed up for the class. I uh, got shipped the product, and then I was supposed to be uh, do the online class. It was a Thursday night at 9 o'clock because uh, the company that does the uh, event is out of California, so it's 7 there. time makes sense. It would be at 9 uh, our time here. And uh, just totally forget about it. I, I mean, I, I get off work here. I go home and just sit on the couch. I get done this class. So I never go on like, sitting on the couch, just sitting on the couch. And then the next day I was like, shit, there's that brandy I was supposed to be drinking. So, uh, But now we have a class uh, here where we're going to go through each of these. We've got four people trying these which is kind of cool and we'll give you our honest feedback we haven't tr- we just got 50 milliliter samples so very small sample size here for the four of us but uh we'll we'll share what uh, we think of these we'll get to that after the break as well as telling you a little bit about clear cut sounds like they've got a pretty interesting story before we get to that darren said he had a question that apparently he stole from jim uh, what is it darren <laughs> so my question that i stole from jim is um what is the worst cold food like, what is the worst food to eat cold? Like leftover. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> and just to make it more interesting, we all can't say the same answer. Okay. So okay. if Jim wants to go first. Okay, Jim can go first. Cold soup. Cold soup. Oh. Leftover cold soup is is not good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that I think that's. Uh, I think <clears throat> that's yes. Soup has to be hot. What about? What about soups that are cold, like a gazpacho? Yeah, falls that's under soup. Is that is that, that is that okay? That that would be okay because it's not really a leftover. Right. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's I agree. Soup is is bad. Uh, I'll go next. Here's one that I hate. That actually a lot of people love. I don't like this though. I don't like pasta cold because it absorbs the sauce. Then you get it out the next day, and you know, this pasta that you put in with the sauce, it's all in the pasta now. And I like the pasta to be on top of the sauce. I don't like it. Now part of the, and I don't want it to be all one and the same. It's changed in a way that I don't like. So I don't like cold pasta for sure. You, there's some you can heat up. Maybe if you're getting like uh, fettuccine alfredo, you can you can bring it back to life a little bit. Add a little olive oil, put it on the. But in, in terms of cold eating on the fridge, I don't think that there is a good pasta. Cold? Yeah. Do you consider lo mein a pasta? Lo mein? Uh, no, no. <laughs> cold lo mein is good. Yeah. Yeah. Cold lo mein. Yeah, I think that's okay. I agree. Cold pasta is not. Right. There's, you can't do it. You can't do it. Okay, um, that's good. There's a pasta that you're supposed to make hot, and me and my wife eat it cold. <laughs> we eat it cold. Really? That's, yeah. What is it? Um, Chef it's, Boyardee? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, the... It, 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 it is a box uh, uh-huh. pasta. It's like a ch- uh, bacon and uh, peas and... Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, so you do like it's a like pasta ranch, salad. ranch. Yeah, yeah, like a pasta salad type deal. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I guess but the you other can't thing, answer if that, I can't yeah, answer, you the, can't same answer thing, the pasta, so you do it have to would be, most. it would be hamburgers. Hamburgers. I can't do a cold hamburger. Cold. There's no, yeah. 
Again, I, I agree. It, it, it can't. It can If you heat it up, you can bring a burger it. back to life. But uh, just cold out of the fridge. I don't like that either. Really. No. no. Well, I'm not a. So not a, all you, would those, you like a, just a cold burger? No. There's, no, a, there's a lot of bad cold. I mean, foods. Uh, yes. But just but my yeah. least favorite is I think it would be soup. But yeah, cold burger. No. 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 <clears throat> now I can do cold steak. I can eat, I can slide off a piece of steak and, and eat that cold. I have yeah. no problem with that. But if it's burger, a good steak. But right, but like the burger with all the accoutrements and stuff like that. No. no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I had a cold bratwurst on the drive to work this morning because I had one in my fridge and I wasn't going to warm it up. <laughs> yeah, that's just, just, that 30 seconds of the month. Yeah, I would have been, so oh, light. man, he'd have run late if that would have happened. Well, then I would have had to find some way to hold it so right and try and eat that because I was like, I literally decided as I was walking, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll eat this right now. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, French fries. Cold, like you cannot reheat true, French fries. True. I guess. Uh, until they invented uh, the air fryer, though. Yeah. Right. Once they invented the air fryer, right. all get, uh, that that those fries then are just but but again, are just out of the fridge. Terrible. Yeah, just out of the fridge, they're terrible. Horrible. Can yeah. everybody in on a dirty secret in the air fryer? All it is is your convection oven. So if you turn, put your oven on convection, it's an air fryer. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. My <laughs> oven has a built-in air fryer mode. Yeah, I know that. Convection. But... That's all this. Yeah. I have eaten cold McDonald's fries. They're horrible. They're okay. No, no, no. No, no they're okay. No, no, they're if you're horrible. hungry enough, all right. they're okay. Yeah, I'm hungry. All right, we'll head you to my car right now. We'll look between the seats. Of the <laughs> no, no, no. fries and you got to eat them. Yeah, no, I, I want you to prove that they're, that they're good. <laughs> well, it is the fans. It's, it's 89 degrees. Yeah, yeah, those actually, they, they, they might be all right. They might be all right. It's convection. Yeah. So they, they were, yeah. My car's brought them back to life. So, yeah. 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 So that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a little, nice. A little hint of armor all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. Okay. All right. Well, what we'll do next, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be trying these six different brandies from Clear Creek. We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We will also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Staven Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. This is Mudcat Mike from Embry Rowan Distillery. You're listening to the Bourbon Daily. All right, everybody, welcome back. My name is Steve Eckley, joined by Evan Neaters, Darren McCroy, and Jim Fosnott. We are here at the ABV Barrel Shop Tasting Bar, and we are trying six different brandies. 
six different brandies. So, uh, Darren, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about Clearcut because it sounded like they had a pretty interesting history. Uh, so, this isn't just your normal run of the mill small little craft distillery. They were started in 1934. 34. Yeah, and so it's under the name Big Hood, Big Hood, Big River Distilleries. <laughs> You can see what he's doing with his hands here. Big Hood, yeah. Yeah, a big, hood big, big Hood, Big, big River. river. <laughs> you say, and the whole time he's like you, stretching his arms. If you down, say Big Hood big, enough, and you stretch your arms, it turns Dutch into river. Big River. That's yeah. how. That's how yeah. it is. Yeah. I knew it wasn't Big Hood, but we're, we're, but you said uh, it three times. The Mississippi yeah. Hood, <laughs> the Mississippi Hood, the Mississippi River. Yeah. So <laughs> it's all the Hood River, <laughs> and they have all these little distilleries. So uh-huh. particularly the gin. Started in, or not the gin. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're getting no good information oh. here. So, <laughs> part of the problem is, like, during the break, uh, I, I read further down the alcohol, or down the list, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> the alcohol. And he went down the alcohol, and then. Jesus. But I read further down the list, and it, it, like, gave the history of each of their distilleries. So, I have now realized that there's one big one. And then their gin was their first one, so that's why that was on my mind. And if you say something while I talk, it comes out at the same time. I cannot do that. Okay. Never have been able to. Okay. <laughs> what? That's a totally different tangent that we won't go on right now. But all right. Anyway, <laughs> well, that was a lot of good information. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. people learned a lot. Of it. They, <laughs> they, they, they walk away with a lot of good information about big hood gin. <laughs> big, big hood, hood gin. gin. <laughs> I love it. Mm. <laughs> but they use a bunch of fruits from their, uh, the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Because everything's Which, growing up there anyway. So, there's some great... Uh, I'd like to see a huckleberry gin. And, and certainly Oregon would be a place you could get some huckleberries. But uh, uh, we don't have that here. So our, what we're going to go through, and this will be the order, but we'll, we'll remind you as we go. We're going to have cherry, raspberry, plum, pear. These all sound great. Douglas fir. Not sure about that one, though it could be the best one of the day. We'll see. We'll see. And last but not least is... Uh, one that says pot still, uh, ABV. So I assume that's a whiskey. I don't know. It just, all it says is pot still. So we'll have to try oh, that one. See we yeah, guess we'll, it. we'll, we'll have to see what that is. Not uh, kind of unsure what that is. So what is the fruit on a Douglas fir? Cause it, it, it's a nut. Like it pine should cone? be a, a pine nut. And does that count as fruit? Does it not have berries like a juniper, like a Right. Evergreen? Maybe it does. You should, mm-hmm. here's our tree guy. You should know. know. No, cause I can picture the pine cone in my head. It has little snake. <clears throat> Tongues on each of the end of the umbras, which is the part of the pine cone that the seeds sit in. Okay. So I, I don't know why they can. Uh, it's a fruit of the tree. Is that like the branding well, yeah. definition? Yeah. yeah it would okay. Be, but so I, I just don't know if that was the fruit of yeah. the tree. Yeah. No, that is technically a fruit of the tree. Like pine cones are fruits, acorns sure. okay. are fruits. Okay. So I guess you just steep them and see what happens. So I don't know. Uh, so a little bit of mystery here. And again, I would probably know what the last one pot still is if I would have attended the event. I did not. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when we get to that. So let's go to our first one. It is a cherry brandy. Cherry brandy. Smells like a cherry donut. It's got mm. some dough to it. But let's try it. Let's see what we got here. What do you guys think? Here we go. It's also probably important to know. Oh, that's good. Uh, that it is an unaged brandy. Unaged brandy, yes. Uh, all these are until we get to the fur. So the first four will be unaged brandy. So that is good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I get as much cherry. It's just as a conventional fruit. Yeah. It on is, it. It's it's fruity. <coughs> I don't know if you could point out the cherry if you. I would have known that that's what it a was. A blind tasting. I don't know that you'd get the cherry. Yeah. Um, but a sweetness for sure. Sweetness. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, 40% ABV, so, you know, it's, it, it's got a nice, kind of sticks with you a little bit, yeah. center of yeah. the palate, so that's kind of nice. All right, next up is raspberry. raspberry. Who likes raspberry? I, I love, love raspberry. Me too. Okay, we all, we're all, that's good. There's a Ooh, good start. I immediately smells like it. off the yes. <laughs> It smells like raspberry. So this one's, this wow. one's different. It's strong raspberry, so see if the taste holds up. Yeah, that's nice. That tastes like mm-hmm. raspberry. That's, I like that. That's good. That's good. That would be really good for some summer cocktails. Yeah, that, oh, that yeah. would be. Yeah, probably make that for a class sometime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. that one. That's the winner so far. Summer uh, this, cocktails. This, yeah. this next one, plum. I like plums. Plums are good. It smells like plum. Plum. <laughs> plum. All right, here we go. Plums. Oh yeah, that yeah. one might have the most of its original flavor, flavor. still in it. Yeah. That of the one so far, I actually probably like that the best, and I did. I would thought I would like that the least. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that's good. 
Good. What do you think, Evan? You like that one? Yeah, that one is good. Okay. I think I like the raspberry a hair more, but that is good. Yeah, that, just, the raspberry is tough to beat. Raspberry is tough to beat. All right, pear. Pear. I'm getting something. But I, not pear. Not almost. pear. No. It's not pear. Pear is kind of the generic fruit, too. They use pear flavor for, like, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah. It's kind of pear. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't something say that's my favorite. Yeah, something on the back side of that one's not, yeah. Yeah, not doing it for me. That's not the, I agree. <clears throat> it's not the best one, but... Smelled similar to the cherry, mm -hmm. but not a... Uh... The taste oh. wasn't the same. A little uh, wasn't there. astringent on the back side. Astringent and uh, powder puffish. Mm. You know, like, uh, like back when your mom would be put on makeup <coughs> and powder, yeah. and you kind of, some of that ends up in your mouth. You're like, oh, that, that, yeah. kind of that taste to me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day. That was a tasty note I've never heard before. Mom's, <laughs> mom's powder mom's makeup. Powder <laughs> yeah. Makeup. Mom's powder makeup. Oh. I have my mom come in. I'm sure she's oh, still got some I, of that. I, I uh. understand. I, <laughs> as soon as you say it, I get it. Right. I just never heard that as a tasting note okay. before. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Douglas fir. By, this has to be the most interesting one going yeah. in. Yeah. It's, it's unexpected for sure. And it smells the most interesting. Too. All right. Mr. Tree Guy, what do you know about the Douglas fir? Their cones have little snakes tongues on the snake umbra. tongues. Okay, all right, that's it. It's not uh, native to this area. Is it native just to the Pacific Northwest? Yes. Okay. So in, in Western logging, there's four big trees that they harvest all the time for lumber, and Doug fir is one of them. Okay. All so right. it has a very big Listen lumber use. Mr. Cool, there, Doug fir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it it which smells Doug, good. Which Douglas is his name? <laughs> it smells like almost like mouthwash. <laughs> Yeah. Like kind it smells of almost a little, a little minty. Like almost a little minty. Minty. Maybe minty. that's what I'm getting. Okay. Wow. It's not bad. It, it's it does it have tastes, kind of wintergreenish yeah. mm -hmm. taste to it. It's not bad. I don't know there'd be one I would sit down and drink, drink. No. Yeah, a glass after glass. It's, it's interesting. It's yeah. it probably, and could create a cocktail. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. It could probably be interesting mm -hmm. in some cocktails, but uh by itself, that would not be my. Uh, no, I'm it not going to. brings a you. unique flavor. Yeah. 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 I, I don't see myself just. Pour me another one of those, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting to have because, like, it's out of a Doug fur. Like, right. That's the right. coolest thing about it, I think. Right. Like, it's good and interesting, but it doesn't have much repeat drinkability need. Right. You don't least. know enough about the treaty called Doug. It's yeah. Douglas. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He's still on formal terms. He's not yes. friendly yet. His full name. So, our, our last one here, it just says pot still. Um, Darren, in your research that you did, the exhaustive research, do they make a whiskey? Do they uh, sell a whiskey? They had a gin distillery and a brandy distillery. From what I saw. Okay. That so, they were willing to give me okay, history so. of. We don't know. Big River Hood. We have no idea. And again, this could be something that uh, that they're trying different. And, and so... Could just be one of their aged brandies. It's it could be an aged brandy say. that uh, and they're just denoting pot still. And yes. And what proof is this one? This one comes in at uh, 95 proof. No, 85 proof. I'm 85 sorry. Proof. Math. Difficult. All right. Let's try it. Is it the pot still version of that? I don't get the Douglas fir notes on mm -mm. it. No. Mm -mm. It's definitely it's, not a whiskey. No. I think there's an aged brandy. I don't I know. I think what it is. An it's pretty brandy. good. Maybe they it's switched good. to. Uh, maybe they switched to column still and this is the old pot still, or maybe they mix it up and do both. I don't I don't know. It's good. It's yeah, I, I good. like it. I, that I, I, I would like it. I would that's drink a really that. easy drink. A really I would drink smooth. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. not something yeah. that's named pot still, so I don't know. With, yeah. No. Uh, again, in, all, in their defense, I would have needed to attend the event, and they would have explained that. So, uh, we don't know. It's good, though. I like that one. Their yeah. cinnamon whiskey is called Sinfire, though. Sinfire, okay. Yeah. It's their, uh, their I think I would rank... I like the raspberry best. I liked the... Uh, probably the pear the least. And uh, the oddest one of the day... Uh, was the Douglas fir. Again, I, I think if anything, it would be in a cocktail. What do you guys think? What favorite, least favorite, and oddest one? Was it the plum? Yeah. The favorite plum? Yeah. I like the plum the most. And okay. I, that was surprising to me because I thought that that wouldn't be my, my thing. I would agree with you the Douglas fir is odd. It's not bad. It's just right. Just different. Yep. Um I think everything here was solid. That cherry could be great in some, uh, some yeah. drinks as well. So I don't. We didn't have a bad yeah, one. Yeah. No. They're yeah. nothing, nothing yeah. offensive. For no, sure. I agree. Yeah, I would go plum. Pear is my least favorite, and Doug fur is up there. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas <laughs> four. <laughs> Douglas <laughs> four. <laughs> I just, Jesus. 
I think it's interesting. It, like, I wouldn't drink it often, but it's interesting. And so that okay. intrigue has my brain going. Okay. All right. Evan, how about you, man? I think the raspberry and the whatever the pot still was, that was pretty good. That, yeah, that was, that was good. I, that's that's very, almost my very number drinking. one. But that's the right. raspberry, I think it's mainly just because I knew what it was. Right. That I really liked that one. And I think I agree. The pear was just uh, not yeah. quite it. Not quite it. But yeah. it was it was it wasn't bad. The truest to the to the the fruit taste to me was the raspberry and the plum for sure. Yeah. Th- mm-hmm. Those two those two hit on, uh, you know, like a, a alcohol version of their respective fruits, which yeah. is cool. Cherry didn't have a big yeah. cherry note to it no. at all. No, but it which was it, I feel like it should have right. too. Yeah. yeah, you would think. You would think because you think of anything. Uh, you know, from the candy world, and again, those are flavored with flavors, but uh, cherry's always the boldest out of mm-hmm. any of them, so it's interesting. All right, on that note, uh, good tasting today. Uh, Clear Creek sounds like they're doing some cool stuff. I, I like it. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, maybe work with those guys and maybe do a one off. I don't know, we'll reach out. It'd have been great if I could have attended the event, got to know the <laughs> owner, but uh, I'll reach out to them, say we like their stuff, maybe send them a link to the show, and we'll see if we can maybe get something in here from them. That'd be kind of cool. Road trip to Oregon? <laughs> well, road trip to Oregon. Yeah, yeah Oregon for sure. Is. I like that part of the world for sure. All right, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Evan, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me at the ABV Barrel Shop pretty often, uh, trying out some of their great single barrels that they have. And uh, you can also find me at Evan Neaters on Facebook. That's All right. Okay. Uh, how about you? You can find me on Instagram at The Bourbon Adventures, also five days a week at the ABV Barrel Shop. Yes, and Kenny, you never know, because you and I traded some days yeah. this week and stuff. And so everything's yeah. all different. The schedule's all upside down. So, so yeah. You have to come multiple times a week to make sure you see me. It's a okay. surprise. Yeah, you it's never know. You never know. All right, Jim, how about you? You can find me on Facebook at Jim Fosnot, on Instagram at Foz Jim, or five or six, seven days a week, depending on what's going on here at the EP Trail <laughs> Shop, uh, talking about Doug Fur. <laughs> For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. We put all of our previous shows, our podcasts, our blogs, Bourbon Zeppelin, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us, the ABV Barrel Shop. We've talked about it several times. We let you try before you buy here, which is pretty darn cool. So check us out online at abvbarrelshop.com. And hey, if you like the show, give us a five-star review. It helps new people find the show, which is pretty darn important to us. And hey, get involved. Head over to patreon.com slash the ABV Network. On that note, we'll let you go for today, and we'll see you tomorrow with a brand new show. Take care, everybody. See ya. Bye, all. Cheers. Bye. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's Birthday Barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.